Carl and Brendan here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life, GBHBL.com for sure. And it's track by track time as we are going back to 1992, March 10th to be specific, when Body Count released their debut studio album, Self Titled. Uh, the album's material focuses on various social and political issues, which one listen of you'll completely get. It ranges from police brutality to drug abuse, but it also presents a uh, turning point in the career of Ice T. You know him, he's a rapper, right? He co wrote the album songs with leaders guitarist Ernie C and performed as the band's lead singer, which he still does to date, should be noted. Uh, previously, obviously, known as a rapper, Ice T's work with this band helped establish a crossover audience with rock music fans. I mean, 1992. Uh, this was way before my time to really getting in or understanding metal, so this went over my head. But also as well, this album is well known for the inclusion of the controversial song Cop Killer, which was the subject of much criticism from various political figures. Although, of course, many people defended the song on the basis of the group's right to freedom of speech. But Ice-T and the band eventually chose to remove the song from the album, although it does get does continue to be performed live. Uh, my copy of this, the version I listened to, did not have Cop Killer on it. Oh however, however, I made the decision to do it anyway. I know the song, and I was like, you know what? It's supposed to be in this album. We're gonna, we'll, we'll talk about it at the very end anyway, because it's such an integral part of this album. Know it well enough to be able to do that. Um, I'll quickly give you my run in history of Body Count. I have no history with Body Count. I knew of them, but I never cared. And truth be told, I never gave them any time. I never liked rap rock crossover, so never gave Body Count any of my time until they recently, the last couple of years, released an album called Carnivore. And it came my way, as a lot of stuff do, music through the website. And I was like, oh, sweet, I'll give this a go. And I fucking loved it. I fucking loved it. I loved it enough that after that, I spent a long time going through the Body Count back catalogue. Enough to now think this band, like, if you'd asked me pre-Carnival, should Body Count play a festival like Bloodstock? I'd have been like, no, no. Now, give me Body Count at Bloodstock. Are you kidding me? That shit would go down so fucking great. And going back to this album, it's an album I know well now or well enough in the last year to two years. Uh, this is a phenomenal piece of work. And I only wish I came across it earlier as I think it would have had way more impact. Well, there you go. Yeah, um, I'm not as big a body count fan as you are. Uh, I'm also like Carnivore and know a lot of this album pre- uh, re-listening to it anyway um, I know like a, weirdly I watched a long time ago now I watched an NWA kind of I don't know mockumentary sort of thing on Netflix I think it was and um, a lot of uh, stuff about Ernie C I see and the formation of body count is actually in that okay and um, from what I remember I might be wrong in this but from what I remember body count was really like an Ernie C thing it's all about him, you know. Yep. Uh, they used to mock him because, like, he used to like to bang guitars while everyone else was trying to hip hop and rap, and he used to like trying to do it. And it took him ages to persuade, like, you know, anyone else to give it a chance. And that's why I think sometimes it's like this listening as Ice T uh, performed as the band's lead singer because it was all about Ernie C. Yeah. Um, and and his appreciation of like rock and metal that eventually got Ice T involved in it. So I kind of have like that kind of memories, but from a mockumentary you know what i mean so you know you don't know how true all of all of it is um but you know I, i've got I, I think body count like we're talking what 1992 release uh and we're shouting there's pretty much the same message then as is being shouted in recent times so you know i guess if um if nothing else that kind of impacts that awareness and that being able to sort of push your message home it's almost more appreciated these days i think yep like to be honest with you i think with people being hopefully more aware and the like that you know it's, it's kind of strange it's strange I found, the thing i found strange and we'll get to it as we go through the album is the album's obviously cut up between songs and sort of statements or, or bulletins yep um mm, bulletins, those yeah. bulletins could have just been yesterday yeah, and that's the crazy thing and the sad thing about it, really. Depressing like, relevancy. 30-year period, the same bulletins are still being reported almost daily. So, 
But yeah, we'll get to that. We will, we will indeed. In fact, we kick off with one. It's called Smoked Pork. It's an intro that speaks volumes about the aggressive political tone that this album is going to take. And I thought it was fucking hilarious that people got their knickers in a twist over Cop Killer. But these 47 seconds alone, like, why was that the one song? And you didn't like, did you not listen to the rest of the album? It reminds me of the video nasty bullshit where they're screaming for the high heavens. And I'm going to use Silent Night, Deadly Night here as an example. The fucking shit that film got in 1985 or 44 when that was released because it depicted Santa as a killer. Yet all those screaming parents and fucking political newspapers completely ignored that in, earlier in 1980, there had been a film that featured a killer Santa. Nobody cared about that. All they cared about the one that had high, had a more promotion. Cop Killer, because of its title, got noticed. How many people never even listened to it? Just saw the title and ignored it. Whereas Smoke Porks, 47 seconds, particularly how that intro ends, which is simply put, killing a cop. Yeah. Fuck people. Yeah, I liked it too. <laughs> <laughs> I like, you know, it is what it is, and it? it's what it's meant to be. It's um, obviously typical aggression and a point to make. Um, and I guess, you know, it's, it's announced in what the album is going to be. You know, if somebody doesn't know who Body Count are or pick it like back in 1992 or whatever, you pick an album up, you have no idea what it is you know by the end of the first track, you know, what, what you're going to be listening to. So yeah. it does its job. Agreed, agreed. And then we properly kick in as we get body counts in the house. The chug of the guitars, the spoken repeated band title, the sound of sirens and gunfire. I think the introduction is brilliant. The guitars have proper headbanging groove to them and to show their metal credentials, they even throw in a classic heavy metal guitar solo here. It's a very repetitive track, but I think it works as new layers keep getting added. It seems to me, though, it's a track designed to be played live. As you can see, Ice-T introducing the whole band and speaking to an audience. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a, it's a hip-hop song, mm. basically. This is a very, very typical thing in many, many rap and hip-hop circles, uh, this kind of lyrical introducing thing. Yeah. Um, you know, like a lot, like, I mean, lit bands I listen to, like horrorcore bands and stuff like that do it. You know, the, the ICP have songs that are just all about juggalos, uh, the, where, where the juggalos, where ICP, Twisted do it. They all do it. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing that makes this song cool, and actually this counts for a lot of the songs on the album, is the music. The music is just fucking heavy and brilliant. The riffs are great. The drums are great. And they all combine nicely in this song as well with this kind of background police siren, you know, again, to kind of keep that vein running through the album yeah you know so while it does a hip-hop sort of song lyrically and a hip-hop song in, in in the sort of style of it musically like you could watch this shit man yeah yeah i think it's dangerous man it's dangerous sounding like if you were there live you'd be a bit scared for your safety yeah now sports oof you wouldn't think a five second recording could have so much impact but this does Simply put, the media, Brennan said at the start, this could be referencing something yesterday, such as the impact of this five second recording. Yeah. Yeah. Like this one is surprisingly, I mean, like a lot of them are, but this one's like massively impactful. Yeah. It's a bit more subtle in a way, like uh, just gives you the statement and then goes on. Oh, now sports. Yeah. Like, like just brush it under the carpet like it's nothing. But what I am going to try and do, and what I have tried to do in this album, is I have also tried to at times step away from the message and judge it for what it's meant to be, which is a musical release. Yeah. Um, I so because of that, I have one negative, and that is purely that we're about to go into track four. We haven't had a song yet. Mm. That's the only thing I would say as a negative. You know, we've had the two bulletins and the introducing sort of hip-hop style thing. And it's like, all right, man, give us a song. Fair, you're absolutely right. It's a good way to judge it. But we do hit one now with body count, the actual track body count. We get an unexpected bit of guitar melody. The vocals come in and it's immediately quite important that you listen to what is being said here. It changes tack and delivers a blasty, basic blast of punk infused metal. I think the vocals are great here. The chorus is hilariously catchy and the drum solo is pretty cool as well. I think this is a brilliant track.
Yeah, I like it a lot. I don't think it's brilliant, but um, uh, I mean, I like the gentle build up. I like the view of suburbia kind of he, he gives um, and then the sudden pickup. I think the riff, which is really bassy, is really, really cool. The song's got a nice flow to it. And I, I, I guess because I didn't really know, to be honest with you, that you was, you know, kind of d- down with body count. Mm. Um, you know, look how young I am saying down with <laughs> um, white people. But, but so I remember listening to this one thinking, oh, this one I don't think you'll like because the uh, rap delivery is really quite old school rap. Like, uh, you know, it's not got that kind of, I don't know, the modern sort of crossover sound. It's very much right. like how the, I don't know, that sort of <laughs> late 80s, early 90s rap was. Um, Drums agree, drum solo is awesome, but the drums across the whole thing are awesome. In fact, the yeah. drums across the whole album are awesome. And the uh, solo is tight as well. But my, my one negative about it is I do think it's a cool song. And this is like, again, we're on track four now. This feels like a jam session. Like okay. They recorded them, them jamming. You know, him freestyling, him, oh, my turn on the drums, oh, I'll do some soloing. Like, it, it didn't doesn't feel like a song. It feels like a really cool jamming session. Interesting, interesting. Well, we do have another uh, bulletin. Uh, I love that term that you chose with a statistic. Uh, six seconds, basically, uh, giving you a sobering statistic. Yeah, yeah, same. I mean, I, I, you know, this obviously to do with the amount of black males in prison compared to it within the education system. Yeah. I did, I did, I did try really, really hard and failed uh, to try and see if I could get the same statistic for as of now, uh, but, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, but yeah, again, like it continues on the message, you know, uh, keeps the theme and keeps it planted really very firmly in the listener's mind. That's it, isn't it? Uh, Bowels of the Devil. The punkiness is present again here as we get a fast-paced blast of heaviness. I think it's a strong statement wrap, wrapped up with a forceful punk noise. It's another memorable effort. Yeah, I, I, and I did start off by saying this kind of feels like the first proper song on the album. Anyway. Okay. Um, it's got a kind of motor heady rock and roll sort of punky vibe um it does lyrically have that slightly sucky to me oh we're crooks and we're going to shoot you all sort of rap vibe which is a bit you know something i can <laughs> deal without with even within the rap music i do like uh, musically really neat though again really cool pace uh swanky solos you know so i do enjoy it i think it's a good song the real problem another <laughs> bulletin this time we got 12 seconds and ice tea telling us saying something about fear Yeah, uh, regarding the way society thinks with a reference to the hatred of white communities for underground rap and hip hop scenes, yeah. and aggression towards mixed race relationships. So, yeah, I get the point. <laughs> you know, I get it. Um, I understand. Completely. And it kind of leads into KKK bitch. Uh, this is firing in your face. This one has a great beat, but is made all the more impactful by the story that is being told. I think that it's got a tongue in cheek touch to it but the bassy verses playing off the punky, punky chorus really works for me grand wizard of the kkk yeah yeah musically very cool again that kind of rock and roll vibe bass sections have a bit of a jazz club feel uh, lyrically, it is quite funny, and while yeah. it's a straight-up dig at racism, it's delivered in a kind of massive your mama joke sort of way. You know, that's what it felt like a little bit. Um, massively over-sexualized, purposely offensive, you know, by design uh, with rock and music. It's very enjoyable. Absolutely. C-note, a short slice of old-school melody and slow guitar soloing. Uh, it's a bit odd. Sounds cool, but it's a little bit odd. Yeah, nice little instrumental. It's cool with a nice melody behind the soaring solo. Um, and again, there's this kind of stuff like, like I, I really enjoyed this sort of stuff, but uh, mostly because I was referencing back in my head to that documentary and the way that it was like, oh. like Ernie C, as in C note. Um, like he, he had like, like in my memory of it, he had like 50 bloody tracks written. Like he used to just like sit in the studio while they was trying to record like NWA albums, like blazing around a guitar and they'd have to keep telling him to fuck off out of the room. Like, okay. That's what he does. He loved it. Okay, I can imagine cool. like this was just like, I want one song. Let me have it. <laughs> I'll have you to know. check this out, man. I have to look for yeah, it. Yeah, I have to find the, there's a proper name for it. It's not called NWL. I'll, I'll get the name for it. Send it it's not straight out of Compton, is it? Oh, it is straight out of Compton. Yeah, oh, this, okay. uh, the, the whole formation of body count stuff comes up in it. So. Right, yeah, okay. I haven't seen it, but yeah, I'll have to check it out. You know, yeah, cool. Uh, Voodoo, the first of a couple of longer ones. Here we get some really meaty metal sound that has a dark and sinister groove. A story that plays around with horror 
while the music alternate, al alternates between wild and uncouth and focused heavy rhythm. I like this one. Yeah, I'm a fan. I uh, love the intro and the drop of the chugging riffs. I like the transitions. It switches pace quite frequently. Uh, lyrically tells a really cool story in a very clever way, which I've always quite liked, um, you know, in rap or in metal, like, you know, but when you deliver, I mean, especially when you deliver it in rap, like when rap tells a story, it's much more exciting than when rap just says they're going to steal your money. Basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, and um, I think the drums are very cool throughout again. I mean, the drums really impressed me across this whole album. As much as I love a lot of what I see doing in NEC and everything, uh, the bass and everything, the drum is fucking awesome. Um, and the solo too, like well, if you, I think I see sort of has like a low sort of hush spoken, just repeats the word voodoo, while only sees like blazing out a solo over the top of it. And it's got loads and loads of good ideas. I like it a lot. Going back to what you said about the story thing, I just want to say to people, uh, bear in mind as well that the last rap hip hop album we did in a track by track was only a couple of weeks ago and it was Kid Rock. So compare the <laughs> two, this is quite a breath of fresh air. Fucking hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the winner loses, okay, over six and a half minutes long. There is a bit more melodrama to this one. We have Ice-T actually singing for stars, which is cool, but the melody really hits nicely. The power-up is cool, and the instinct vocals are stunning. This is almost a classic heavy metal ballad, and I'm just like, what the actual fuck is happening here? What a track this is. Yeah, it's, this is a brilliant song. Absolutely fucking phenomenal. Um, real change right? of pace. Yeah, like genuinely just unexpected, like completely, you know, uh, surprises the hell out of you. But then, I don't know, man, this is like the whole thing, isn't it? Like, I guess sometimes what we do, like people say to us about like, oh, because your guys can shout, it's a, it's a or, or growl or roar. It's surprising that when they can sing. Mm. And I guess we're looking, we're going, oh, Ice T's a rapper. Oh my God, he can sing. Yeah. So it's like, well, actually, maybe, you know, maybe we shouldn't be surprised. But I just never heard him sing. Yeah, before, same. You know, and there was no, there was no indication that it was going to happen on anything that had come prior to this. There was no little moments or anything like that. It was all very straight up rap. Um, I love this song. I love the acoustic melody, the pick up the heavier sound as well. The singing vocals, like we said, are great. Also, the backing vocals behind it are great. Uh, the ending solo where he repeats you think it's a game over and over is really clever um yeah i think it's brilliant fantastic yeah song. yeah absolutely a stunner on this album uh there goes the neighborhood to me part it's a tough task to follow that last song but here they add a touch of doom before exploding in the hair raising heavy metal speed the galloping rhythm and the chorus that drops the tempo for a doomier touch make this one enjoyable i like it but i don't love it this is, a, I mean, aside from Cop Killer, this was probably the song I knew the most of this because this was like another big single or a big hit. Um, so I knew it quite well and I've always liked it. I think it's brilliant. Uh, I love the lyrics, uh, like insults thrown at body count. You know, so he's like basically repeating the things that other people have said to him, like, you yeah. can't play here, you can't do this. You know, about gatekeeping, really. Like, yeah. it's also still very relevant. Really you know, is. You, you can't play on a rock festival because you're a black band and, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, I like the way he delivers a, like, you know, considering as well now, because this has more impact, I think, lyrically, vocally, sorry, because while it's back to the kind of rap thing, it's very menacing and snarly, and now it's coming off the back of a song where he sang. Yeah. You know, so it almost, like, has more impact than if he'd just been doing this all the way through. <clears throat> Guitars are great, drums just crush. It's also got my favourite solo across the album as well. So, yeah. Oh, that. awesome. Awesome. Good placement for the track then. Uh, Oprah, we've not had one of these for a while, and here we get seven seconds of Oprah basically serving as an introduction to what will be the next track. Yeah, um, yeah. I, you know, I, I, at first, I, I didn't really kind of get like the reference at first, like that it was really anything to do with the next track. And I was confused because every time we'd use these kind of bulletin, it had obviously been to ram a message home. Yeah. And this message was different to all the rest of the subject matter. <clears throat> so I kind of, at first I was like, oh, we seem to have gone off topic a little bit you know but no i agree absolutely uh it should also be noted if you don't know oprah means oprah winfrey i realize i'm 
saying something like you probably already knew, but just in case, who the fuck's Oprah? Oprah Winfrey. Um, Evil Dick. This is the track that that leads into. It's a tongue-in-cheek response to what she was discussing discussing on that particular show. Uh, it's the first track that simply put, I just don't care for. Even if the low tempo guitars kind of work for me, uh, this was one I was like, nah, I'm not not. This is not for me. Yeah, I don't really. I don't like it. Well, I don't really. I don't like it at all either. Yeah. Um, I just couldn't get over the visual image of the line "Evil Dick leaves little gooey traces." <laughs> struggled with that I was like oh my god dude no um, while there is some good riffing and guitar lines especially in the chorus that's about all I've got on this one I think it's really dumb yeah I think it's dumb that's a really good point it's really dumb thankfully we need something to bring us back and it's Body Cannon Anthem uh, the fire is back reigniting my passion uh, this is a nasty short blast of intensity that really does the job for me it builds its chaos brilliantly and I can only picture the pits it has created over the years. Pure headbanging gold, one hell of a chant for fans to do as well. This is a this is a banger. Yeah, I remember, I remember before this song started playing, <clears throat> I was looking at the lyrics for it. So I was scrolled down. Um, and I thought this is going to be fucking stupid because the lyrics are essentially just either shouts of BC or shouts yeah. of body count. Um, but actually, it's surprisingly good. Um, and that's mainly down to the kind of dark and heavy music that makes up the bulk of the song. You know, it's a, it's a headbanger of a song, man. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mom has got to die tonight. The penultimate track, inverted commas, chugging riffs, bursts of metal flair and aggressive tempo. This is a track that might be the weirdest and most challenging track on the record. One with strong lyrical content, but I find it's got a progressive edge and a very tiniest smidge of psychedelia. Yeah, I'm, I'm this song. I mean, I wrote this song's a bit nuts. I think that I think there's a punchy kind of underlying message regarding racism passed down through parents and generations. Yeah, but it's not crystal clear what they're trying to get to. Um, and the way that they deliver it, I, I mean, I might be not right here, but I've written this equivalent to a sort of cheesy, gory horror flick, that mm. horror comedy, you know. Um, music is simple and catchy enough with good riffs, good drums, but it's just not a favourite. No, fair enough. And the last official track these days of the album, Freedom of Speech. Uh, for me, the most rap heavy track on the album. This one leans way more towards hip hop than it does metal. However, I don't really actually have that many complaints because it's got some powerful lyrics. But also, like, this rap, uh, I enjoy because it's being delivered by a pro. Like, Ice-T is a pro. So, like, I'm listen I listen to him. I'm not tuning him out. I'm not hearing Kid Rock go, oh, I've got all this fucking money and all these birds and I'm going to fuck you up and all that and go and shut up, you mug. I'm listening to Ice-T talk, tell a story, tell a message. And I'm like, okay, yes, sir. I'm listening to what you're saying. That's why I think I end up liking this one. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I, agree, I agree that it's, like, very rap yeah um but but to me that wasn't a bad like i know it wasn't you either but to me that was like absolutely fine you know i was more than happy with that um i think it's great it's one of one of my favorite songs on the album uh, i love the style of rap uh, i like the message it's very fiery it's still very relevant today with some great lines about freedom of speech but watch what you say and uh we have the right to remain silent but i want the right to speak which i think yeah. are both lines that i think are really cool brilliant uh great guitar stuff again some more catchy drums and bass Kind of foundations behind it all but for me it's the lyrical content and story that wins on this i think it's graceful yeah absolutely and we did say at the start we would talk about it uh thrown in cop killer uh we have to mention as i said this absolute banger you know it you've heard it we know it it's downright dangerous at best it is a very very it's an anthem an anthem for body counts an anthem for the air it's an anthem for now fuck, it makes it makes you go fuck the police and because i'm feeling controversial and it's 2022, and uh, as of the time recording, don't just fuck any police. As we're in England, fuck the Met. It's unfair on the whole of England, though, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it just London? No, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. For all you other forces that aren't corrupt idiots, um, you're all fine, I presume. I don't know. I don't fucking know what the police are like up in uh, up in northern England. They could be just as... They could be worse. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I like 
cop killer i can understand the controversy because of the name because like if you're you know like this is a problem and it's a problem i guess sometimes even in the things that we might say is of course there are corrupt cops mm. even in the met of course but that's not to also say that there are many many good cops out there who aren't corrupt you know so i would like to just make sure that no one's taking carl's advice here to go out and kill the met how the fuck did I say anything? Because you're talking about cop killer and then pointing out that the Met are all corrupt. No, it's just relevancy to recent times in the UK, if you know what we're talking about. That's all it is. Um, we're not a political channel, so we will move on. <laughs> shut up. We always chuck out little bits here and there. You do it all the time. What about politics? Sometimes. I don't know. We're getting off topic here. Yeah. It's uh, Cop Killer. It's a good song. It's a good song. It's not like even if it was on the album that when I listen to it here, it still wouldn't be in my top three, weirdly enough. I have songs on this album I prefer to it. So that's nothing to do with the content or anything like that. I totally get what they're doing. And it's very difficult. Doesn't mean that I don't try. It is difficult to pretend that I know how they feel about these things. Yeah. Um, being a white guy in a different country that's never experienced what they will have experienced. So uh, you know, you try and put yourself in their shoes, but I, I would imagine. I, what I think I might get close to, I'm probably nowhere near it, mm. you know, and that's, that's the, the real complicated part of it. Yeah, strong words from Brendan there. It's simply that. How the hell can we ever relate? Um, sitting across Zoom right now talking about this album, we can't. It's simply as that. So it's going to be interesting then because I also wouldn't have put uh, Cop Killer on my top three. So top three tracks then. I'll go first and I have chosen the actual song Body Count. I have chosen The Winner Loses, and I have chosen Body Count Anthem as my top three. Cool. Uh, one similar. One, one, one not similar, one the same. <laughs> well, I figured. Um, freedom of Speech for me. Uh, there Goes the Neighbourhood and The Winner Loses. Yeah, there's six tracks, actually. Ignoring the one that we doubled up on, so that's, uh, well, that's five tracks then. Five yeah. tracks you could easily check out and get a really nice selection and taste of the best that this album has to offer. Uh, the ones you've chosen would have been shortly behind my top three as well. Um, it was a journey and it was a fun, fun, interesting journey. Got any thoughts? You know what to do? Drop them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?